So before I just start creating tables and just putting data into there, we need to have a little bit of a structure of what we're actually going to be using and how it's going to be set up. And so um, I'm going to be creating a database here that's going to have tables that are going to be for a bookstore that I'm going to set up. And so what I've just done here is I've got three different tables, basic tables to work with, a table for books, a table for author, a table for publisher. I can see the information that I want to actually put into this. And so I'm kind of laying it all out just to see how it all is going to work together. And what I've got basically is a book ID which is going to be used as my primary key. And if you're not familiar with the primary key, it's the field in my table that is unique that never repeats and so this is going to be the unique identifier and so I just started off with one and just increment it by one every single time um, I've got an ISBN 10 number, 13 number, the title of a book, a category, a price of the book uh, the binding whether it's paperback, hardcover or, or whatever, um, a publication date and now what I did here was I instead of putting all the author information I have gone ahead and I've created a separate table for authors and this is going to be my field that's going to be used to kind of link these two tables and make a relationship between these two tables. So you can see here that I've got it as a primary key. It's going to be one, two, three, and so forth. And what this is going to do is it's going to link over here. And if you're not familiar with this, this is called a foreign key on this table. And it's going to be the primary key of this table. And so that's going to establish that connection between these two. And then I've also done the same thing with the publisher one. You can see like publisher, and this one's filled in as publisher two, meaning for that book, the publisher was as Penguin Books Canada Limited. And so this allows me to have separate tables for separate kinds of data, um, an author table, a publisher table, and whatnot. And I've got to, I'm going to be able to make it so that I can establish a link between these or a relationship between these. Now, another thing that I want to point out is what kind of data type do I want my table to be set up with for each one of these fields and so for instance take a look over here the book ID you can see that I've got a number that increments if I've got a thousand books in here you can see that number is going to be four, four digits long and if I plan on just using numbers well then I can get away with just using a number data type and so these are some basic just general data types there's more data types available but some of the basic ones that are available for Oracle and so you've got the one that's char which is basically just going to be a set of characters strung together as a string and uh, you can see some of these like title would be a good fit for that one uh, verchar is just another example uh, another different way of looking at the char and I actually prefer this one because when it stores data it actually stores it as how many actual um, letters or how much of the text is actually used is how much gets stored in data so it's actually in my opinion a better version to use for storing text and then we've got small integers which you can see here is from negative 32,000 to about positive 32,000 it'll hold the data anywhere in here and then the integer holds quite a larger number and so the range is quite bigger now neither of those two uh, hold decimals and so if I'm going to hold decimals I need to choose the decimal data type and then I've got one more option that I'm, I may use, it's a common one, and that's the date. And you can see in Oracle, this is the format where it's date, uh, the date comes first, then the month, and then the four uh, numbers for the year. And so these are the basic data types. And I need to establish whenever I create my table, what data type I need to use. So for like book ID, I could use an int or a small int. And basically the difference between these is how much room it takes up in RAM and so you usually try to find the best fit for it. I could use that or I could use char or ver char. Um, even though it's numbers it's still I can use it as a string because there will be no mathematical calculations ever done on this particular field. Um, ISBN 10 of course I could use the char ver char. I could also use the integer again and since I'm not going to ever do math on an ISBN number uh, I might choose uh, ver char for that and the ISBN 13. Now that when I have text in it uh, I'm going to need to use uh, one of the strings and so yeah, I'll use uh, probably Verichar for that. And now that I'm looking at it, you can see here this one's got a letter X in it. Some ISBN numbers actually have letters in there as well. So with that being the case, then I'm going to want to use Verichar for an ISBN number. Now category is going to be strings, so we're going to use Verichar. Price, I'm going to use a decimal because I've got decimal places. I'm going to use Verichar for that as well. Um, publication date, I, I can go ahead and use date if I'd like. I don't have the full date there, so I may just use um, Verchar as well for that one. Author number, I could use 
Verichar, and same thing for Publisher, I could use Verichar. If I wanted to do numbers that had some kind of calculation to it, then I probably want to do, and it's not as a whole number rather than a, a decimal, then I would want to do int or small int. And so you can see here, same thing for the fields. And this is just the basic setup for my database. In the next video, we're going to actually look at writing the code to input this table. And all this is, is just some books that I pulled out, some recent ones that I've gone through and read. And so just kind of threw that information in there because I had it readily available. And this is what we're going to use to create our database.